Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to be talking about the histogram. The histogram, which you can find in the top right hand corner in dark room, is a graphical depiction of the light values of the pixels in the image. When you hover the mouse pointer over the histogram, you get these five buttons here. The first one cycles the mode between regular and waveform style histogram. The one next to it controls how the data of the current mode is displayed. And the next three enable and disable the display of the red, green and blue channels. With the mouse pointer over the histogram, you can press the control button on your keyboard and use the mouse wheel to change the height of the histogram. You can hide the histogram panel completely by pressing Ctrl Shift H on the keyboard and reshow it by pressing the same combination. The values in the histogram are calculated from the preview version of the image here and not from the high resolution one that's displayed in the center. This is done for speed purposes. The default mode is what's called a regular histogram. And this one shows the distribution of pixels in the image according to their lightness for each of the color channels, so for RGB. can disable channels separately to show the ones that you are most interested in or display them all at the same time. In this mode, the x-axis runs from 0 to 100% lightness and the y-axis gives the number of pixels at that lightness. In other words, the higher the graph on a certain lightness level, the more pixels are in that lightness level. For instance, in this one, you can see that there is a more or less equal distribution between this level, lightness level here to this lightness level here and then the number of pixels drops on the lighter side of the spectrum. The second button here changes the distribution or the display of the Y axis between logarithmic and linear. The default is linear that means that the y-axis goes from 0 to 100 in a linear progression. If you press on it, it becomes a logarithmic progression, which means that you would have more space on the chart for the darker part of the image, the shadows, than you would have for the lighter parts of the image or the highlights. Any part of the image or any pixels that are outside of the histogram or display here may be clipped. If we click on the first button here, we change the display to what's called waveform. The biggest difference between waveform and the regular one is that the regular one does not show you where these pixels are in the image. You have to guess that for yourself. So these are the shadows and these are highlights. Where the shadows and highlights are in your image, that's up to you to determine. That's not the case in the waveform. In the waveform, the x-axis, which as you remember we just described in the previous one, is just goes from shadows to highlights, from lightness of 0 to lightness of 100. Here it corresponds to your image. Left is left of the image, right is right of the image. So whatever is displayed here corresponds to what's on my left of my image. Whatever is displayed here is corresponds to what's on the right side of my image. And you guessed it, everything else in the middle is for in the middle and so on and so forth. The vertical axis or the y-axis in the waveform represents the brightness. However, here we have a third dimension. 
and the third dimension is the number of pixels with a given brightness in a given pixel column of the image and that is coded by the color of the pixel in the waveform now to give an example and make it easier I'm going to hide the blue and green parts of the histogram and just concentrate on the red all right so this shows the brightness like we said the y-axis the higher is more bright the lower is darker shadows self-explanatory the x-axis is where we're looking at on the image so if I look in the middle that means it's in the middle of the image and next we have the display and the display is color coded that means the brighter the pixel here is the more pixels at this level are on that part of the image so if we look here if you look at the bottom you can see that the pixels are a bit lighter than if you look for instance here that means that on this part of the image so on the left here you have more pixels that are on this level and now we're talking just about red on this level of lightness and red then you'd have on this level of course you have zero pixels that are on high, higher levels or more lightness and the brightest one in red with the highest lightness are in the middle and they're here on the bottom you can see that as well there are none that are on zero percent lightness to help us with the visualization we do have here lines the top thick dotted line that you can see here is the 100% lightness so any pixels that arrive here are on 100% lightness if something is above this line then it may be clipped and then you have the thinner dotted line here that's 50% lightness and the bottom of the scope is the 0% so this goes from 0 to 100 here not on the top just on the thick dotted line and 50% lightness is on the thin dotted line let's try again with a different color I find it quite difficult to visualize it if I put everything in together especially when all of the colors are um, more or less on, around the same area I know that this picture is quite red centric but still if you put them all together then you can barely see it but let's look at the blue for instance if we look at the blue we'll see it's more or less the same the brightest are in the middle of the image but they're at 50 percent and there is a more or less equal distribution between this part here the bottom and the 50 percent almost everywhere and it tapers off around the same way on the right this all makes sense for this image because the Sun was setting in the middle and this is the brightest part of the image so this all corresponds to what do we to what we would expect from it the same would go for green and again the brighter the pixel that you can see here the more pixels on that part of the image that are on that level for that means that well there's nothing at 50% on the left for instance here because it's completely black and then you go below it a little bit and then you see that 
there are green pixels at this level and then it becomes brighter so there are more pixels at this level and then it goes back to dark and there's this scattering of some pixels at that level at the bottom here now how is that helpful and it's, it's quite difficult to visualize and this one is much easier let's say however let's do something here let's go to the exposure and add some exposure until we clip some of the red on the in the highlights now all of this shows us here is that we have some clipped highlights but we don't actually know where those clipped highlights are in the image however if we go to the waveform again and I can see here that there are clipped highlights because they're above the 100% line but I can see as well that they're in right in the middle of the image so here are the clipped highlights and I can actually see them if, if I look closely like I said already I find the display with all three uh, waveforms for the three channels not very helpful luckily there is another way to display it here which is all three next to each other if you click on the second button here it will display the three channels separately or next to each other and that is much easier to look at if you need to see all three colors together the histogram is quite closely connected with the exposure module and we can actually control the exposure module from the histogram you can click on the histogram and pull towards the left to control the black as you can see and you can click and pull on the right to control the exposure as you can see here you can as well put the mouse pointer in the correct place and use the wheel to scroll and you can double click to reset it you can do the same in the waveform view if you are so inclined click on waveform and then the top is for the brighter part the lightness and this one is for the shadows and you can use the mouse wheel or you can click and do exactly the same now if you click on it and pull it upwards it changes the exposure and the bottom part works on the black level as you can see you can use as well the mouse wheel like we've already discussed and you can double click to reset that's it for the histogram panel I hope that you found this uh, video interesting and if you have any questions, corrections or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.